I shall speak in English, and those who will wish to have a Russian translation will find it in our next issue of the Parish magazine, because I don't want to keep you standing too long. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we are so used to the churches where we worship that we do not always realize what the various parts of them mean and could convey to us. The nave in which we all stand is a place of salvation. It is a place to which Christ came, the vast field of the world in which he came to proclaim his gospel. We see him come and address us silently by his visible presence in the entrance of the gospel. When the gospel is brought silently and we see Christ passing before our eyes and then we hear him. The gospel is read aloud and we hear Christ speaking to us. But he comes out of the sanctuary. And we do not always realize, understand deeply what the sanctuary is. For years, years, years I have celebrated the liturgy. And it's only now that I enter it with a new sense of awe, with the feeling that it's a place which is terrifying by its holiness. It is a place where the Holy Trinity is present, the place to which the liturgy is addressed, because the whole liturgy is addressed by Christ to the Father in our words. It is a place of fulfillment. And this fulfillment begins before the creation, when the Son accepted to become the propitiating victim for the salvation of the world. And this is made manifest in the service of preparation, when the bread and wine are prepared as images of the crucified, the slain Son of God. It is also the holy sanctuary is also the place where fulfillment is achieved. Not only the preaching that brings us to life, but a divine action, the consecration of the holy gifts that makes the bread which is brought by people as an act of veneration, of love, and which becomes Christ crucified in the proscomedia, in the service of preparation, is sanctified by the Holy Spirit and becomes a body and blood of Christ. And it is into this place, this place which is so awesome, I almost said so terrifying, because the moments there are when I feel I should not be there. I can't. I can't stand it. It is too great. It's like walking into the fire. It is into this place which our newly ordained deacon has come. From the nave, which is a place of salvation by the word of God, by the life of Christ, by the crucifixion into the place of the resurrection, of the total and final gift of himself and of salvation. And it is one of the most awe-inspiring moments of one's life 
to be able to cross this threshold, the holy doors, because these doors cannot be crossed otherwise than in Christ and with Christ. He is the door, yes, but he is also the only one who, in the form of a man incarnate, can enter freely from the realm, realm of proclamation, of sacrifice and salvation into the realm of fulfillment and divine victory. And today, our brother, our dear and respected brother Peter, has walked through these doors. I warned him of it, and he walked with Christ and folded with him in Christ from the realm of proclamation and salvation into the realm of the world to come, a fulfillment already present in our midst, although it cannot yet flow into the nave as plenitude of life already achieved by us. A deacon is one who is called to serve. This is the meaning of the word itself. And it is such a glorious function to be appointed by a whole congregation of people to be God's servant and the servant of everyone whom God has so loved as to give his life for him and for her. He has become, in a way, your servant, but not in general terms, but the one who is prepared to serve each of you, to lay down his life for each of you, not only those of you who are present here, but all those who will need him outside of the church, anywhere. There is an old saying that the way in which one gives is more important than the gift itself. It is himself whom he is to bring to you. But it is also his soul, his life, everything which is offering you as a gift. I remember a man who was, who had been a soldier in the First World War and later in the Revolution, a soldier of the White Army. He taught in the Russian school in Paris. He was cold, he was stern, he was distant. Everyone felt uneasy in his presence because of this way in which he was shut in. And one day he opened up and something almost miraculous happened to us who saw it. He was walking down the road towards a Russian school. On the side of the road, there was a beggar. People passed him, threw a coin into his head, and many passed him without even looking at him. This man, stern, distant, apparently so cold, stopped. He doffed his hat, bowed before him, and said a few words. He gave him nothing, but the beggar jumped to his feet, embraced him, and this man continued on his way to the Russian school. When he arrived there, he was surrounded by boys and girls. Who is this man? Is it a relative of yours, an acquaintance, a friend? Why did you doff your hat? 
Why do you bow to him? Why is it that you gave him nothing and he kissed you? And compelled by the insistence of children, with a pure heart, open to understanding, he opened himself for the first and perhaps the last time. He said, I was walking from the other end of Paris to come and teach because I had no money for the underground. And when I saw this man sitting there and begging, I thought, if I pass him, like so many, he will think, here is one more person who doesn't care whether I live or whether I die. And he stopped. And to show him that he was truly an equal, truly a human being, worthy of all the reverence one could pay to any human being in distress, he took his hat off and asked for forgiveness for having nothing to give. And this man embraced him. Later, this man, so cold, so stern, died. And it is only then that we discovered that he was so poor because what he received from the school could not allow one to survive. We all had to work in order to be able to teach that this man had died of hunger. But he had given to this man more than anyone had ever given. And I would this example not of poverty, not of dereliction misery, but of greatness be an example for our newly ordained deacon. And there is one more thing I want to say. A deacon remains a layman. And this is one of the ghost's greatest glories for him and for the congregation. He is a layman who is sent by the whole church into the sanctuary because it is too soon for all of us, lay people, to walk into it. We still are in the realm of the message, the realm of salvation, the realm of the crucifixion of Christ, the realm of his teaching. But we, by faith, by longing, by expectation, we are already, with all our heart and mind, with all our longing in the place of fulfillment, with God can fulfill all of us. And every congregation chooses one person, one man, to enter into the sanctuary through the doors through only Christ can cross, the doors of the crucifixion, the doors of love divine, in the name of the whole congregation to represent it by the holy table. When those mysteries take place, which cannot yet fully take place in the nave. How must our prayers accompany him? Because he is sent by us into the fire. The sanctuary is like the burning bush. We send him there to become part of this burning bush. We know that by the mercy of God, he will not be burned. But how frightening it is, even having unshod one's feet to enter into this realm. Let us therefore rejoice that one of us has entered into this holy realm of fulfillment, carrying all of us within him and bringing to all of us the message which is born in the Holy of Holies. Let us pray for him 
because it will take him a lifelong time to become worthy of having crossed this threshold. But this very struggle is essential. It is his growth, but it is also our growth, the growth of every lay person who has laid upon him the burden of being in this presence of awe. And therefore, let us rejoice for him and for us. Let us pray for him as he will pray for us. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with him and with all of us. Amen. Упование наше, слава Тебе! Воскреси из мертвых, Христос, истинный Бог наш, молитв ради Пречистой Своей Матери, святых славных и всехвальных апостолов, и же во святых Отец наших, Василия Великого, Иоанна Златоуса, Григория Богослова, преподобных и богоносных Отец наших Сирия, Игумена Радонежского и Вся России Чудотворца, и Серафима Саровского Чудотворца, Священномученика власти Севастийского, святителя Стефана Сурожского, Павла Цареградского, Григория Некисарийского, Никиты Новгородского, их же мощи почивают в нашем храме. Святых и праведных Богу Отец Иоакима и Анны, святых столпов православия, Марка Подвижника, и других жизнью и смертью прославивших Христа, святых земли сей просиявших и в земле России просиявших, святителя Тихона, патриарха Носковского и вся Руси и всех святых помилует и спасет нас, яко благ и человека любец. If you are not.